Hello, I'm Dr. Carol Matthews. I'm a professor and a veterinarian at the Ontario Veterinary College at the University of Guelph. And one of my special interests is wound healing and wound management. Um, working in the intensive care unit and the emergency service, we tend to see some um, pretty serious wounds. Some of them are very contaminated and some of them are infected. In investigating management of wounds, um, looking beyond uh, the medically approved um, therapies that were available, I discovered um, that honey had been used for several hundred years as a, um, used in wound healing. And looking at the properties of honey, it certainly made a lot of sense as to why it may be a successful uh, medicament for the treatment of wounds. The very first case that I used honey on was a dog that was burned in a barn fire. Uh, the dog had been treated for a week before um, he came to us and obviously it was such a huge wound it was very difficult to keep it uh, clean and it wasn't healing very well. There were four bacteria that were um, isolated from that wound. The dog was on antibiotics and the antibiotics the dog was receiving um, was the right choice. It was the, uh, the bacteria was sensitive to that antibiotic but it wasn't able to get to the, to the wound area. So I uh, applied the raw honey. Um, we had a big tub of honey and we put bandages in and laid the bandages on, on top of the dog. Uh, because it was so huge and we knew it would be very exudative, we laid a sterile terry towel over the top. Uh, when we visualized strike through, which was in probably about uh, six to eight hours when we could see the fluid coming through the bandage, we changed the bandage. And as we were changing the bandage and we were taking uh, the uh, original layer of uh, bandage off, a lot of that dead tissue actually peeled away on the bandage. And um, we didn't use a scalpel blade or anything. It was just that honey was able to remove that tissue that was necrotic and um, was impeding wound healing. So the types of cases that we would use honey on would be uh, cases, um, as I mentioned, trauma cases, and they receive what we call a degloving injury. That is, you know, if you can imagine here, you've, this is your skin, and now I've been dragged along the road and my skin has been um, removed, dragged off on the road. So I have this huge open area. So what we would do then is, yes, we do a clean, um, and then when we have cleaned up the wound and taken off the huge areas that, uh, of skin that are, um, are obviously need to be removed, then we would just pour the honey on. So you pour the honey on the wound, you bandage the wound. On the first couple of days, you need to change that bandage a couple of times a day. Take out however much honey we would need for that particular wound. And you have to be extremely generous with this. So here is, this is the thickness at least that we would use on that wound. So if I had a wound this size, So if I assume that this is an area of wound here, then I would lay that onto the wound. And then I would apply another, um, what we call a soft sandwich bandage. And then we would use regular bandage material. And over the next few hours, what will happen is the honey will draw the lymph fluid up to the wound. The wound will become very moist, we'll pull that edema tissue, uh, edema fluid out of the tissue. The difference between the jar of honey and this medical grade honey is it's been gamma irradiated. It's still raw honey, but it's been gamma irradiated to remove what the potential for clostridium spores that may be present. 
it, clostridial spores rarely, rarely found in honey, but just in case uh, it will be eliminated by gamma irradiation. It can't be heated, as you know, because it will destroy the, the beneficial products of honey. So the honey has been impregnated in, in uh, material that facilitates just placement on top of the wound. So if you take a look at this, we have a, this is a honey in a calcium alginate dressing. And so this would be handled with, with uh, sterile gloves and it would just be laid onto the wound. So it looks pretty much like what you just, <laughs> on top of the uh, comb. And then this would be laid into the wound and it will bandage in a similar manner as I just showed you with the raw honey. Now this honey is uh, a manuka honey, which is um, from Australia and New Zealand. So this is a specific type of honey where the flora is very uniform and has a specific content that has been scientifically researched and found to have all those medicinal properties um, that I mentioned and that's required for wound healing. And the properties of honey um, have different qualities. They are qualities that are antibacterial, antifungal, and um, they also have healing properties. So when you're looking at large contaminated wounds, um, you have to consider all of these aspects before the wounds can heal. Um, studies looking at organisms um, that have been exposed to a particular antibiotic have shown that over time they do develop resistance. Exposing those bacteria to honey, those bacteria have not developed resistance against honey. So it seems that over those centuries, uh, honey is still um, antibacterial and antifungal and antiviral. And resistance after all those years still hasn't occurred. Um, I have this patient that has a huge wound and it's it's contaminated and infected and it's containing four different bacteria and obviously the healing isn't going to continue or even start until we can clear out the bacteria so I I'm fully aware of all the therapeutic components contained within the honey and uh, I'm very curious as to how you would harvest it knowing that you have to harvest it for medicinal use as opposed to that consumption, right. normal consumption. Right. When we're working with honey to be used for medicinal purposes, we need to handle the honey very gently. In other words, uh, we uh, do very little filtering and we don't apply uh, heat to the honey. Uh, heat is often used to be able to, to move the honey. It makes us less viscous. Mm -hmm. But with uh, because the enzyme that's present in honey is easily damaged by heat, uh, when we're harvesting it for medicinal purposes, we use no heat at all. Right. So let's have a look inside the hive okay. and we'll see the honey we're going to Yeah, this is the challenge I'm really interested in. <laughs> so we seeing. pop some smoke there just to calm the bees down. And then we'll, uh, we'll open up the hive. I've already put a little one-way exit underneath the hive here so that there are very few bees in here now. They've all gone down into the bottom box. And so we'll just take comb of honey out of here. And beekeepers are experiencing economic problems right now because they're, every year we're losing about a third of our, our bees. Medicinal honey uh, could provide an, another source of income uh, through direct sales to, uh, to people that require honey for medicinal purposes. It should also have some spin-off effects uh, where if people are hearing about the medicinal benefits of honey, those that are just wanting to consume honey as a food product will realize how beneficial it is to their health as well. Well, there you are, Carol. Well, thank you very much, Paul, and uh, really enjoyed the, the tour and the explanation. Thank you very, very much. And on behalf of my patients, thank you again. You're very <laughs> okay. welcome. Sir. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks a lot. Sure.